It's been confirmed that more than 13,000 jobs are at risk at the retail empire Arcadia, which includes Topshop, Burton and Dorothy Perkins, which has gone into administration this evening. Arcadia had been seeking a new injection of cash following lost sales because of the pandemic. But a former boss of Topshop, Jane Shepherdson, has told the BBC that the group's problems go back much further than the pandemic and she alleged that Sir Philip Green, Arcadia's chairman, had failed to invest in his retail empire and had made its downfall inevitable. More details from our business editor, Simon Jack. In his pomp, a fashion emperor who dominated the high street and didn't mind flaunting the vast wealth it brought him. Lavish parties attended by the rich, powerful and famous. A description he felt comfortable with himself. The empire was full of household names that customers of all ages would recognise. Tonight, that empire has collapsed into administration. There's going to be huge unemployment. The woman credited with building the Topshop brand explains where it all went wrong. Philip's overriding concern was to buy something as cheaply as he could possibly buy it and then to sell it for as much as he could get for it. The online players such as ASOS and, and Boohoo don't have the cost base of the stores. They don't have to pay for staffing in their stores. All they have is their online presence. They're much better at it. They've invested a huge amount of money in it and they have a much better connection with their customers. The list of retail failures is a long one, but Arcadia is the biggest for years. There are 444 stores and hundreds more concessions within other stores. There are 13,000 workers whose jobs are at risk and an estimated £350 million hole in the pension scheme. This is, or was, the jewel in a crown that in truth slipped many years ago. Once a powerhouse of fashion retail, led by the king of the high street, now a business in ruins, led by a man considered the unacceptable face of capitalism. But this is not about one person. This tonight is about the 13,000 people who are facing a very uncertain Christmas and thousands more in a very troubled high street retail sector. Simon here, thanks so much for talking to us today. I spoke to one Arcadia worker who didn't want to be identified, who said the uncertainty had come at the worst possible time. A lot of us are feeling a bit anxious because we don't know the full extent about what's happening ourselves. For us, it's about money around Christmas time. Bills have to go out. We don't know if we can afford stuff for Christmas. We're worried about what will happen to our pension schemes. Will we still get paid if we're in administration? Tonight, Sir Philip is here on his £100 million yacht in Monaco, where his wife is resident and who received a £1.2 billion tax-free dividend from the business in 2005. There is another twist. Debenhams makes money from renting store space to Arcadia brands. Arcadia's collapse could scupper a rescue of the department store by JD Sports another 12,000 jobs at risk. The pandemic has been brutal to businesses with underlying health issues. Suddenly you've had COVID, which has left you with a sort of perfect storm in retail. And those retailers who didn't move on during that perfect storm are the ones who are going to suffer and die. And that's what's happening to Arcadia. But they're not alone. There are other retailers in a perilous position as we stand today. Stores are open in Scotland and will open in England on Wednesday as administrators try and sell off Christmas stock and maybe some bits of the business. Uh, Simon's with me now. Let's talk about the future of these big brands mm. and indeed what happens to customers who've got orders in right now. Well, the, I've got the administrator's letter here. They're saying no redundancies are being made uh, at the moment. All online orders made over the Black Friday weekend will be honoured. And as I said there, trading, the stores will reopen. But beyond that, it's very unclear. There's a lot of industry chatter that some of the online brands might want to snap up the top shops, top mans of this world. But it's the brands they want, not the physical stores. And that's where the jobs are. So it's a very uncertain outlook. You've talked to Sir Philip Green many times over the years. Uh, you've mentioned uh, his whereabouts there. I'm just wondering what you think is going through his mind. And has there been a peep out of him today? I haven't heard from him today. Uh, listen, um, for all his abrasive nature, He's actually more sensitive or thin-skinned thin than people that might even explain his behaviour, thin-skinned than people think. So he will feel this keenly, but that will be cold comfort to the people who are facing an uncertain future. Is there another act in the Philip Green retail drama? I don't know. He's very stubborn. He's very slow to change, as we've seen. The future of retail is about technology. I don't think he's got the skill set that modern retail requires. Simon, many thanks again. Simon Jack there, our business editor.